Hey everybody, I wanted to provide an update on the Peyton Gendron Buffalo Mass Shooter story. If you are familiar with my channel, you'll know that I did a two-hour deep dive on Peyton Gendron that is up on my Odyssey channel. Um, could not post it on YouTube for obvious reasons. Um, but there is a video on my YouTube channel um, asking about somebody named Armand, having gone through Discord chat logs, you know, of who Peyton was talking to in Discord. Um, if you haven't watched that video, please do so. It is a short video. I think it's less than 15 minutes long, just kind of going through some of their conversations and asking questions about, you know, well, I asked at that time who was uh, somebody named Armand that Peyton was talking to, where they, it seems like they're talking about the shooting or committing a shooting and it appears that he's being groomed um there were other people in that discord server that i had not been able to identify um we might have identified armand it, it might be a teenager living in the uk who is a criminal um i don't know if that's confirmed for sure that is speculation at the moment however I had posited, I had asked the question, was he communicating with federal agents in this Discord server and was he being groomed? And believe it or not, there's a link to the Texas shooter, Ramos. And so things just keep getting weirder and weirder, guys. Um, I just want to first say, if you're new to my channel, please um, hit the like button, please subscribe to my channel, and please share the videos. I spend a lot of time doing research. I spend a lot of time putting things out and, um, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to hit the like button, to subscribe and to share the video because YouTube suppresses channels like mine that are willing to look into things that are not, um, politically correct, right? Con more controversial things. So, um, please do that for me if you will. Now, um, I also want to say that the, when I make these videos, I'm doing them very quickly when I find information that I'm trying to vet. So if I do get something wrong, I will do an update to a story and I will correct that mistake. If you notice that I get something wrong, please let me know in the comments because I do want to correct it. I want to be as accurate as possible. Um, also, if you have more information, if you have something that I do not reference in this video that is related to this, let me know in the comments, or you can also shoot me an email. I have my email address listed in the about page on my YouTube channel, so you can contact me if you have more information, um, because that's really, I, I need more information on this. I'm doing my best to research it. I've got a lot of other things going on as well. This is just one of many uh, things that I'm covering, but I do feel vindicated because I put out that video asking about was Peyton groomed by federal agents? And I think that that's what we're seeing. I mean, it seems like there's some connection here. And the other thing, Peyton Gendron had been alerted to local authorities in Buffalo, the New York State Police, because he had threatened a school shooting prior to this incident, um, prior to the mass shooting at the Topps grocery store. So he had, he was already on the, the radar of law enforcement for what? School shooting. This ties us to Texas because Ramos was also on law enforcement's radar for um, threatening a school shooting four years prior. In fact, as you'll see, there is something very weird going on and it might have been the same federal agent in the same Discord server grooming both of these people. How... What are the what's the likelihood of that? That cannot be a coincidence, guys. So I'm just saying I feel really vindicated for my initial theory of what I saw going on here. Um, I have been in researching FBI entrapment and um, so-called acts of domestic terror where the FBI is involved, and we always find some kind of confidential informant or some kind of undercover FBI agent connected to this. We also typically see a psychologist or a psychiatrist and things like SSRIs. And so, um, anyways, yeah, that, I, I do feel vindicated. So, uh, by the way, every single link will be included in the video description. 
Um, and then just go through, watch my other video, please. Maybe do that before you uh, watch this, then come back and watch this. But I want you to have that background. So go on my YouTube channel, look at the video asking about who is Armand, who was Peyton Gendron talking to in Discord, and then watch this one. Okay, so obviously a trigger warning for people who don't like this kind of talk, you don't have to listen to this. But anyways, authorities investigating if a retired federal agent knew of Buffalo mass shooting plans in advance. So what do I see this as? I see this as sort of them trying to get ahead of the narrative that we're going to find out federal agents knew about this stuff in advance and allowed it to happen. And it seems to me that this is their way of trying to sort of head that off, right? To get in front of it and kind of tacitly admit that, yes, someone may have known, but only just a little bit in advance. Come on, guys. Law enforcement officers are investigating whether a retired federal agent had about 30 minutes advance notice of a so-called white supremacist plans to murder black people at a Buffalo supermarket, two law enforcement officials told the Buffalo News. Authorities believe the former agent, here's a big um, red flag believed to be from Texas. That's where we have the uh, Ramos school shooter was one of the last six individuals who regularly communicated with accused gunman Peyton Gendron in an online chat room where racist hatred was discussed, the two officials said. The law enforcement sources with direct knowledge of the investigation stated these individuals were invited by Gendron to read about his mass shooting plans and the target location about 30 minutes before Gendron killed 10 people at the Topps Market on Jefferson Avenue on May 14th. The news could not determine if the retired agent accepted the invitation. No, guys, he was communicating with people in Discord months in advance. Look at my video, my prior video discussing this. Look at the Discord chat logs. I don't know if they're still... I, I had everything linked in my deep dive, the two-hour deep dive on Odyssey. I don't know if those logs can still be accessed. These were like-minded people who used this chat group to talk about their shared interests in racial, racial hatred, replacement theory, and hatred of anyone who is Jewish, a person of color, or not of European ancestry, said one of the two law enforcement officials with close knowledge of the investigation. Quote, what is especially upsetting is that these six people received advance notice of the Buffalo shooting about 30 minutes before it happened. Quote, the FBI has verified that none of these people called law enforcement to warn them about the shooting. As if they didn't already know, the FBI database shows no advance tips from anyone that this shooting was about to happen. Guys, the FBI should have known. Um, let me see if I can find the headline. Um that the FBI had been monitoring people in Buffalo in advance since 2018 of anyone talking about mass shootings or any kind of shooting at all. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Um, Buffalo FBI agents tracking people believed to pose shooting threats by Phil Fairbanks, July 3rd, 2019. Uh, what, what are the odds of this stuff? You cannot make this shit up. You just can't. So don't tell me they didn't know he was al he would have been already on the radar for the prior threats of a school shooting, which was reported to New York State Police. He was sent to New York University for a psychiatric evaluation. He was put on SSRIs. Don't tell me the feds didn't know. Agents from the FBI are in the process of tracking down and interviewing the six people, including the retired agent, and attempting to determine if any of them should be charged as accomplices, the two sources with close knowledge of the probe told the Buffalo News. 
The two sources did not identify the agent by name and could not confirm what federal agency he worked for. The Buffalo FBI office declined to comment on the investigation. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Buffalo declined through a spokeswoman to comment. Buffalo's civil rights attorney John V. Elmore said it would be outrageous if it turns out that a former law enforcement officer had advanced notice of the shooting and did nothing to prevent it. How about if they groomed these people and encouraged them and pushed and prodded them and nudged them? Quote, if he had advanced notice, he had a moral obligation to get on the phone and try to notify someone about it, unquote, said Elmore, who represents the family of Andre McNeil, who was shot dead when he went to Tops to buy a birthday cake for his three-year-old son. That is so sad, and it is so tragic. Attorney Terrence M. Connors, who is representing several family members who lost loved ones in the shooting, said, quote, as outrageous as this may sound, based upon what we are finding in our investigation, it is not surprising. He declined to reveal the evidence his law firm has collected. The New York Times reported May 17 that Gendron invited a small group of people into a private chat room on the messaging platform Discord to review his plan about 30 minutes before the massacre at Tops. The Washington Post reported two days later that 15 people accepted Gendron Gendron's invitation into the Discord chat room and were able to review his plan and watch his live stream video as he committed the killings. You know, but what neither of those publications acknowledged or discussed was the fact that Peyton Gendron had been communicating with people months beforehand in Discord in another server. Why is there no discussion of that? Federal authorities are investigating if the retired agent provided information to Gendron before he went on his shooting spree, the two law enforcement officials told the news. In addition to law enforcement sources, two other individuals with knowledge of the mass shooting investigation have also confirmed federal authorities are looking into the former agent's relationship to the shooter. The Sandman. FBI agents are also trying to determine the identity of an individual Gendron calls Sandman in Saint Sandman in his lengthy social media diary that appeared on Discord 30 minutes before the attack, the sources said. In the diary, Gendron indicates Sandman counseled him on manufacturers of AR-15 semi-automatic rifles and their quality. The shooter purchased and allegedly used that type of assault rifle and the Rampage, which local authorities have said was fueled by his racial hatred. Right. In the document Gendron posted on Discord just prior to the shooting, he references Sandman three times. In a passage dated May 2nd, he quoted St. Sandman as saying, quote, When the time finally comes to deal decisively with a whole host of society's problems and not go to prison for it, you'll, you'll know. Just be ready. You have spent your entire life from the day you were born right up to this moment reading this sentence coming to where you are right now. Look around you. Are you content with where you are right now? Are you where you want to be? If so, continue to march. If not, what are you going to do? What's your plan? Get and keep your mind, body, and spirit right. Pray, lift, run, read, shoot, and teach your kids to do those things." Unquote. A third law enforcement source told the news they are aware of Gendron's writings involving the quality of different rifles. The shooter ended up using a Bushmaster X-15, a version of the AR-15 rifle, police have reported. Not once have they mentioned Armand uh, in this article. Now let's look at Paul. Paul is Paul, so just, you know, <laughs> prepare yourselves accordingly. But this is interesting, right? Two mass shootings in the span of a month. One shooter, a furry wignat. Well, I, I, we don't, that's dis disputable whether or not he was an actual wignat. One shooter, a mutt tranny. Both shooters, mentally ill 18-year-olds. Both belong to the same Discord server. All of this happening in the midst of more right-wing politicians winning their local primaries all before the 2022 elections. 
which everyone under the sun knows the D's are going to lose big time. D is desperately trying to get their voter base to rally around gun control and abortion issues just so they don't lose their elections. I can't be the only one thinking all of this stinks. Now the Discord Buffalo, it says the Discord server the Buffalo server was associated with was called Friend Chan. Jimbo Boy, you see him here, will go offline and publish links to downloads of the manifesto and transcript tomorrow. Friendschan.org. Note, I added more to this section after I downloaded it. The, here he is in April saying, I'll start by saying that it wasn't like I was born knowing I would do this. So expecting me to save money constantly throughout my youth and continuously train myself is stupid. The time when I really got serious was the beginning of January, so I'll start there. At that time, I had already bought a Mossberg 500 shotgun and ammo, sold many of my military gear and silver at P&J's flea market for cash, and started dieting. I should have continued dieting and exercising daily. I stopped due to laziness, and I ended up gaining the 10 pounds I had lost back. So here's another question. Where did this kid get the money? You know what I'm saying for this? Where do young kids get the money to purchase something that is like $6,000 worth of gear? Does that make sense? Then this was posted on the same server 13 days ago. The Drace is talking. Then there's Armand, Texas, 13 days. Woo! This was sent in the Friends Chan Telegram 13 days ago. And today, a school shooting happened in Texas. This isn't the same Armand as Discord. We suspect um, this is the same Armand on Discord we suspect was grooming Buffalo. Interesting. So, I don't know. Um, it's very bizarre. Yeah, manufactured crisis psyop. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Interesting indeed. So it says, the server was shut down today after some anons found it, so the past messages couldn't be read. Not confirmed, but seems likely. Yeah, so again, this is not confirmed. I have not been able to 100% verify this. However, it just seems weird, right? It seems very, very strange. Um, okay, so now let's move on to this. Retired federal agent regularly communicated with Buffalo Gunman in prior Discord chat room. A retired quote-unquote federal agent quote regularly communicated unquote, unquote with accused Buffalo Gunman Peyton Gendron in an online chat room on Discord and authorities are investigating whether he had advanced knowledge of the attack according to a report from the Buffalo News. Yeah, so we read that. Um, another anonymous member of the Discord chat group counseled him on what gun to buy. How many times have we seen this story exactly? Let's just bring this up to remind everybody of, uh, how this stuff works. If you are unfamiliar with this, parents catch FBI and plot to force mentally ill son to become a right-wing terrorist. He was literally, uh, mentally incompetent, guys. Now, moving on. House Republican claims Uvalde school shooter was arrested four years ago for a threat to shoot up a school. Representative Tony Gonzalez claimed on Friday that the gunman behind Tuesday's shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, was arrested four years ago for threatening to shoot up a school. Salvador Ramos, 18, shot and killed 19 children and two adults before being killed by police. It was the third deadliest school shooting in U.S. history be behind the 2007 Virginia Tech shooting and the 2012 Sandy Hook shooting. Gonzalez whose congressional districts include Uvalde, told Fox News that he found out on Thursday night that, quote, the shooter was arrested years ago, four years ago, for having this plan for basically saying, for saying, you know, when I'm a senior in 2022, I'm going to shoot up a school, unquote. Quote, 
something fell between the cracks between then and now to allow this to happen. We need to shake out all the facts. We need to figure out what happened, where are the holes, and we need to make sure it doesn't happen again, he said. But if law enforcement, you know, identified him four years ago as a threat, we need to figure out why he wasn't, you know, how he got removed from that. Authorities have said that Ramos had no criminal record as an adult, but may have had a juvenile record. Fox News contributor uh, Katie Pavlovich noted that juvenile records are frequently unavailable to the public. Details have surfaced about Ramos' past difficult social life and that he was known to police. The Washington Post reported Ramos lived a rough life with his mother, whom they said did drugs. Reyes told the outlet she tried kicking her son out of the house, claiming... Uh, causing him to scream at her. Okay, now moving to Newsweek. Salvador Ramos arrested four years ago for planning an attack at 18. Yes, yeah, so we did see that. Um, Salvador Ramos, the teenage gunman who killed 21 people, including 19 children on Tuesday at Uvalde's Robb Elementary School, had been arrested four years ago for planning to shoot up a school when he turned 18. Um, in an interview with Fox News Friday morning, Gonzalez claimed the shooter was arrested when he was 14 for saying, you know, when I'm a senior in 2022, I'm going to shoot up a school. Very nice. Gonzalez's claim has not been confirmed by any official source. Authorities have previously said Ramos had no criminal record and no documented history of mental illness. The Republican congressman said the claim was not hearsay. But information that he was given late last night, he did not specify where he got that information. Quote, something fell between the cracks between then and now to allow that to happen. Well, I'll tell you where he got that information from potentially. Um, and I will include the link to this uh, in my video description. I, I don't think I have the ability to pull it up on screen right now. Uh, where did it go? Yeah, okay. This is a local article from Ken's 5 News. Two teens arrested in mass casualty plot in 2018 targeting Uvalde Middle School. This was published May 3rd, 2018. I will link this in the video description. One of the students had numerous writings and drawings which depicted weapons capable of causing mass destruction. He wrote about being godlike and killing police and other persons. Two Uvalde teens were recently arrested for conspiracy to commit murder after officers said they foiled a mass shooting plot the pair had schemed. A press release obtained by Ken's Five thoroughly chronicles events leading up to an investigation performed by the Uvalde Police Department and Texas Rangers. In a press release, Uvalde Chief of Police Daniel Rodriguez said that a Morales Junior uh, High student 14 and a former Morales June 13 had specifically targeted numerous students in what they described as a plan to perform a, quote, mass casualty event against the school, unquote. Authorities said the students were motivated in large part by the Columbine shootings. Investigators also believe the students were planning to hold the attacks years from now during their senior year on the anniversary of the Columbine shooting. However, one of the students began to convince the other they should move the attacks up to this year. Quote, one of the students had numerous writings and drawings which depicted weapons capable of causing mass destruction. He wrote about being godlike and killing police and other persons. He had an academic analysis of one of the Columbine shooter's journals, the release dead. According to the release, the teens were also planning on detonating IEDs before killing students from a list ranked by priority. After that, the release states the pair were going to kill at random before eventually turning the guns on themselves. Quote, any kids that talked bad about them or said anything they didn't like, basically they said they were going to go and kill them. One student said, you just felt unsafe. It was scary. We hear it everywhere, but you don't expect it to happen in your town. One parent said, I'm glad they were able to control the situation before anything does happen and that they actually did something about it. Sometimes you think you're just going to hear it. They say it won't happen and dust it under the rug, but they actually did something. Both students were reportedly evaluated by mental health services on April 19th when the investigation led officials to the pair. The older of the two was released on April 23rd into his mother's care. Hmm. On April 25th, the pair was taken into custody again, and this time arrested for conspiracy to commit murder. Uvalde CISD issued a statement on Thursday. 
Our school district is committed to the safety and education of all our students, and we want to clearly communicate about safety issues when they arise. One of our Morales Junior High students was experiencing a crisis. Upon rendering aid and support, the student revealed a future plan to conduct a school shooting in the year of 2022. With the type of detailed information that was received by the student to law enforcement and confirmed in their investigation, the student has been arrested and will not be returning to our school. Our school district has a strong partnership with our local law enforcement agencies and emergency responders. They share our commitment to student safety, and we are working closely with them to ensure all information is thoroughly evaluated and the school is as safe as possible. We ask parents to assist in rendering their child and children the importance of telling a staff member if they ever become aware of a plan to harm individuals or use of a weapon at school. The Stop It app may be utilized by parents or students to inform administration of any inappropriate behavior. In this way, we are all working together to keep our schools safe. So that is interesting. I will include the link to that Ken5 News article for everybody to review. But continuing here, uh, if law enforcement, you know, identified him four years ago as a threat, we need to figure out how that he got removed from that. But while Ramos did not have an adult criminal record, having just turned 18, it is possible that he had a juvenile criminal record, an idea that has been floated by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Quote, he may have had a juvenile record, but that is yet to be determined, Abbott said during a press conference earlier this week. The Daily Mail reported that an incident involving two Columbine infatuated teenage boys arrested for threatening to shoot up a school did take place in Uvalde in 2018. Their identi uh, identities are reportedly not confirmed at the time, but the Uvalde Police Department has denied the incident involved Ramos, according to Fox News reporter Bill Mulgan. Texas DPS and Texas Rangers tell me this is incorrect. There were two juveniles arrested on conspiracy charges for a shooting plot several years back, but the Uvalde shooter was not involved in that incident and was not arrested, the reporter tweeted. The names of the two students who were involved in the 2018 incidents are unknown as juvenile criminal records are sealed. Isn't that interesting? And isn't that also curiously convenient? So just to head this up, to kind of wrap this uh, up, we have now some curious things going on I do not know if these two shootings are connected. I am not sure. I do not know if this guy, Ramos, was in the same Discord server as Peyton Gendron. It is possible. Um, I still do not know if Armand is, in fact, a federal agent or a confidential informant of some type or just some kid in the UK who happens to be sort of a career criminal. I still have not confirmed that. I have seen people making that claim, um, but I have yet to see proof of that. Now, there were other people that Peyton Gendron was communicating with in Discord. Um, we still don't know who they are, but it's not just the people who were sent an invite to the server right before the attack. We're talking about months prior to that, Peyton was clearly being groomed and given instructions. He was clearly deferential to these people. This is somebody who appears to have been suffering some kind of mental issues, was put on SSRIs, had a psychiatric evaluation, was known to police, had previously talked about a school shooting, okay, was on the radar, we now know that the Buffalo FBI said they were going to be doing additional surveillance and monitoring of people known to have been making uh, threats of a shooting or something. So Peyton Gendron would have been on their radar. Is that how they identified him and began to groom him to carry out this plot or this attack, whatever? And what about Ramos? If he is, in fact, one of these kids that was talking about a Columbine-style school shooting, was that how he was identified and potentially groomed as well? 
Right now, this is simply speculation. I'm just presenting information that I have found as I have come across it. I wanted to do an update to provide this all to you guys in one video. I will put the links in there for everybody, but I wanna hear from you guys. What are your thoughts about this? What do you think about Peyton Gendron and um, Armand and this federal agent? You know, do, what do you think of this Discord server? Could there have been multiple servers where they were communicating? Um, what do you think about Ramos? Do you think that there could be a connection? Do you think Ramos was somebody that was groomed by somebody associated with the FBI? Or do you think it was just a random thing? Uh, I always like hearing from you guys and you always bring very good information. And if anybody has anything that I haven't covered in this video, please reach out to me. You can leave me a comment below or you can send me an email and let me know if you found anything that either confirms what I'm saying, kind of corroborates it or bolsters it, or if you found anything different.